Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and web professor at Johnson County Community College. In this short screencast, we're going to talk about JavaScript and how it defines the word function, how it uses floor function math, how it calculates remainders, percentages, and powers. And while we're doing that, we're going to compare and differentiate math symbols as used in math and algebra class and compare that to how we use them in JavaScript, which is sometimes a little bit different. To do that, I have this little web page created in Notepad++ that's creating this rendered web page that I've opened in Chrome. I'm going to right click Chrome and go into my inspector. And when I go to the console tab, I can actually run JavaScript directly in this web page. We can use the console to test out some basic JavaScript statements. For example, if we wanted to add two numbers in JavaScript, we could test that out by going to the command line at the console and trying the statement. 5 plus 4 is 9. How about 5 minus 1? 4. How about 5 times 4? The multiplication symbol in JavaScript is the asterisk, and the division symbol is the forward slash, just what you would have expected. But here's one you might not expect. The percent sign in JavaScript is considered the modulus character. And even the word modulus has some conflict around it because that can mean absolute value in math. Whereas in JavaScript, the modulus character percent sign gives you the remainder. So 5 modulus 4 would be 1. 5 modulus 2 would be 1. 5 modulus 3 would be 2. So right there we have a symbol that means percent in math. It means modulus in JavaScript. And even the word modulus means something else in math. So sometimes these symbols can get very confusing very quickly. To calculate a percentage in JavaScript, if we wanted 50% of 5, we'd have to multiply by the decimal equivalent of 50%, which is 0.5. There is no percentage sign native to JavaScript. To calculate the power of 5, 5 to the second power, for example, we have to use the math object and the pow function and then feed it the two variables that we want. 5 to the second power is going to be 25. So in every language that you learn, it's really important that you know the four function math symbols, how to calculate a remainder, a percentage, and a power, because it may be slightly different than you learned in math class, and it may be slightly different than you learned in another language. I've cleared my console, but before we get into functions, I want to say one more thing about four function math. When we add two numbers, we get the expected result. But if one of the values is textual, the result is also textual. In other words, the plus sign has two different meanings in JavaScript. It can both add numbers and it can concatenate text. As long as one of those values is textual, the result is going to be a textual result. Even if what's inside the quotation marks is a number, if you enter that number as a value into that expression in JavaScript as text, you're going to get a textual result. And that can be a surprise to some programmers. It's particularly a surprise to some programmers when the other operators don't work that way. Obviously, 5 times 4 is 20. But how about textual 5 times 4? What's that going to result in? Well, that also results in 20, which is odd because when we added 5, plus 4, string 5 plus 4, we got string 54. But when we multiply string 5 times number 4, we get 20. So under the covers, JavaScript has converted this string 5 to the number 5, because multiplying by a string does not make sense in JavaScript. Concatenating to a string does make sense, and you get the textual result. And the same thing is true for the other operators. If we subtract, a number from a string, that string's going to be converted to a number first. If we divide by a string, the string is converted to a number first. And if we, as we've already seen, if we multiply by a string, the string's going to be converted to a number first. However, if we concatenate to a string, we end up with a string. So that's a very interesting and very important aspect to four function math in JavaScript that you need to be aware of. That's called automatic type conversion. In JavaScript, all of our values, they're not declared prior to our using them as integers or strings or booleans. They're evaluated at the time they're interpreted, if they were both strings. 
they would both be converted when we try to multiply them. Having that basic understanding of the four function math symbols in your back pocket, you're now ready to go to a function. And what is a function? A function is simply a name in JavaScript that saves code. Now this console is great for doing these little exercises, but at some point you're going to want to save your code. Now I could create a function directly here in the console, but that would only work for this page at the moment. As you know, if you want to save the code, you've got to go to an external file. So let's clear our console again and let's go over to our file that created this code and create our first function. To create a function, you give it the function keyword and then give the function a name. We're going to call our function add. Inside the parentheses, we identify the arguments. The arguments are the pieces of information you're going to give the add function to work on. And so we're going to give it item one and item two. And then inside curly braces, we determine what is going to happen to this information that we've given the add function and what we want the add function to return. Well, in this case, we want it to return item one plus item two. So I'm going to save this page, refresh my web page. Now this function add is loaded up into this web page and I can test it in the console. Let's try add five and four. And the function has, as expected, returned nine. If I add string five and string four, what happens? I get string 54. How about if I add a number and a string? And how about if I add a number and a number entered as a string? So we see our function is working, but we can reuse all the statements inside the function definition with just the function name. And we can also feed it different pieces of information every time we want to use the add function to get different results. One last thing, I've modified this function to add a couple more statements. I've declared a variable named answer and assigned it to zero. Then I've reassigned the answer variable to whatever the addition of item one plus item two. I've used that expression and assigned answer to the value of that expression. And now I'm returning answer. If I add 10 and 20, I see that my function is working exactly the same way. I rewrote the code this way to introduce the equal sign. This is perhaps the most important and most different symbol between math and programming that you must wrap your head around. In algebra, an equal sign is much like a teeter-totter. Whatever you do on the left-hand side, you have to do on the right-hand side. In programming statements, it's an assignment statement. So answer, you are assigned to the value of zero. Answer, you are now assigned, you're reassigned to the evaluation of this expression. So I implore you not to say is equal to when you encounter the equal sign in programming. I implore you to say is assigned to. This will become even more important later on when we increment a counter by one and you see such statements as x is assigned to x plus one. See, that makes no sense in algebra, does it? But we use it all the time in programming. So when you see that equal sign, instead of saying is equal to, say is assigned to, and I am certain that will help your brain process your code. Thank you.